All right, with this fun shirt on today and these safety goggles, I feel like I'm gonna be a mixture of Miss Frizzle and Bill Nye the Science Guy. Hello, bonjour, guten tag. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Brendan. I am one of the co-owners of The Rustic Tub, a small bath and body care company in the heart of tiny Ontario. And for some reason, I like to film during heat waves. For today's video, we are doing something that we all know and love. We are doing a soap, but obviously today, why would we be doing a repeat soap? We are doing a brand new soap for our line and uh, just a brand new soap altogether. So come along as we go ahead and we get right on into this little uh, make with us test batch of what's to come. So as I just said, we are making a brand new soap today. We are trying out a couple new uh, ingredients into our mix because we wanted it to be something different. So literally for today's video, we are going to be doing a test batch of beer soap. So this is gonna be something completely new to our line. And we hope that it really takes off because we wanted this to be a lot different than any other soap that's on our line. That's our standard recipe. And going right into that, we have our standard ingredients, so I didn't put them up on the counter, but we will be using our avocado butter, avocado oil, castor oil, coconut oil, and we are using a canola oil for it. However, we are also throwing in a little bit of bentonite clay, uh, beer powder, and some stearic acid. Before we jump into like the pure chaos of making of everything, I do just want to go over that we are trying out bentonite clay for today's recipe uh, just because we found that bentonite clay when we looked into it is based from volcanic ash it's actually really really good for the skin and it's really good for a lather for the soap so we were figuring since beer soap is more or less like a guy's kind of soap why not sneak in some actual proper skincare for it maybe without them knowing i don't know maybe they're into it great Next up, we do have a wonderful case of beer powder. Let's get that out of the glare. So it's literally malted barley, hops, and yeast. So it has been dehydrated into a fine powder form. Once again, this stuff is really, really good for the skin after doing a lot of research for it. And it's actually going to help blemishes. So blemishes uh, from the makeup standpoint is literally like acne breakouts, pimples, zits, all of that fun stuff. So un unwanted friends at a party. Finally as well, we have steric acid, which although it's a really good moisturizing agent, we're gonna be using it to harden our bar of soap. And in the past we have used sodium lactate as a hardener, but there have been uh, three times now in the past three years of us making soap where it has become, it kind of made the soap bar set up super, super fast. It became lye heavy. It's had this weird pine salt scent to it. And that's weird because we were making a lavender bar of soap. So sodium lactate threw me off. That's not to say like it's always gonna happen. Like I said, it happened three times for us. So soapers who use sodium lactate out there, hats off to you. I tried it for the first amount. I actually really, really love it. But for this one, I'm gonna go with my safer option of steric acid. And then finally, the last ingredient, I have it behind my drinking slash microphone cup. I'm not going to show it on camera just because it is an above 19 age range in Canada. So because we are making beer soap for educational purposes only, we are using the beer in that sense. And we actually got this beer from a local brewery called Test Batches Brewery out in Midland. So we are excited to make this soap and actually drop it off to them. So fingers crossed it turns out, but without further ado, we're just gonna go ahead and get right into the making of it. So enough of that fun talking, we are getting to the making portion. And to start us off with our beer making portion of the day, we are actually going to be boiling our beer for about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna pour it out into our nice little pot off to the side here. We're gonna be using this one after. We're gonna be boiling it and what we're doing is we're gonna help get rid of the carbonation and the alcohol level in it. So all that's left is you're gonna have the essence of the hops, malt and barley that's in this batch essentially. So we're gonna crack this baby open, we're gonna let it boil down and then once it's ready to go, we're actually gonna be using that to replace our lye water. So I'm gonna go ahead 
open this baby up first on max. I'll probably leave that sound in. You can't really see much, but here. I don't even know if I am allowed to show it if it's education. I'm just trying to be safe with that. So it is going in. I probably won't use this much altogether, but I know with it boiling up, I have to be careful of it boiling over. And I just want to have a couple extra just in case if anything goes awry and I'm able to backtrack and add anything to it. So we're going to go ahead, let this go for 15 minutes, boil down, and I will see you in the next couple seconds when it's done and ready to go. All right, so safety goggles on. A couple weeks ago, we ended up doing a, I believe it was our orange clove soap video. And I found it very, very endearing just how concerned um, nurses who reached out and said like, oh my gosh, like wear safety goggles, you only have one set of eyes. You know what? They are absolutely right because when I worked in the film industry, I neglected myself so much. So now um, I, I'm here to pay attention and listen because that is all true. All right. So our beer is done boiling down. I'm just going to go ahead, pour it into our little basin for the mixture now. And I wasn't saying anything just in case like it overtook the microphone, but I am doing our tester batch. So I am doing a smaller portion of this one, which is exactly what I want. And with it reset, we're going to be adding our lye. So I don't know if I've ever said this, but I always add the lye in after. And I actually heard this from several other soapers uh, to add it in after, because if you add it in before and you put your liquid in, then you have a wonderful chance of it exploding. So just like this, our light is boiling up because we are adding it to the hot beer. So if you can see all of that wonderful process happening, that is to be expected. It is hot adding to hot. So this is like extreme, extremely hot. Thank God I bought the goggles this week. I will say for those of you who are concerned, thank you so, so much. Because this week, um, yeah, we definitely would have needed that. So with that in there, because it is a small amount, I keep saying that we are going to go ahead, let this set off to the side. We are going to let this continue cooking. And I will say full on, I should have been wearing a respirator for this one. The lie, this is going to sound so bad, but personal moment confession time. When I used to work in effect shops, um, there was almost never time when it came to molding. And this was stuff like Ultracal, Hydrocal, this was fine particle stuff. So in every full amount, I should have been wearing a, when I say respirator, I mean a respirator mask to block everything because lye is a lung irritant. You do not need that to get in you. I am being very stupid right now with this. So we got the goggles, but unfortunately stupid is still here. With this out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead, let it sit up. We need it to go down a little bit for our temperature. So I will see you momentarily when she is cool for the next part. All right, it has been about an hour since I came and checked in on this. And we are sitting at 99. I don't know if you can read that. So we're gonna move on to our next process. So we'll let the camera come down and go from there. Okay, I will say that this is our mixture for it. It's looking really, really dark, almost like a very runny molasses. And we're just going to go ahead and play off of that. The smell in here is a wonderful uh, fermented beer smell. So we're going to go ahead and keep on going with our next portion. So I just wanted a nice little close up of that. Those are some bubbles. There is a little bit of residue in there that is to be expected, but that is totally normal from what we have seen. And we're going to go ahead and move on. All right, we have our broiler ready to go. I'm just going ahead and adding in our avocado butter. And avocado butter is almost like a nice substitution uh, to shea butter. And when I say almost, it is, it's actually a little bit more denser than shea butter. And it is a lot softer. So this is why we're trying to add in the steric acid for it is just as a nice balance for it because we want this to be a pure avocado butter soap. Okay, next up we are throwing in our coconut oil. So this will almost be similar in the density capacity 
when it comes to our avocado butter. So it should almost look equal one part to one part in theory. All right, that is good. With this done, I'm gonna pop it into our little double broiler and let that go down. And we're gonna move on to our next part now. Okay, if you have followed along with our videos before, you would know that a lot of our liquid base of oils is castor. Uh, we throw in avocado and then it is a canola oil for price. We did have someone suggest an olive oil pumice, so I am looking forward to using that in one of our videos coming up. Just because we did used to use olive oil, uh, but prices were really, really skyrocketing. So we're going to give that one a shot down the road for an upcoming soap I'm excited to try. Okay, I always throw in our avocado oil next just because... Uh, it's an easier and lower number to follow for me before I have to add in the bigger of our oils. So I'm going to go ahead, leave that one as that. And in our tester videos, I always show everyone we're actually not using a lot of product. This is really good for testing. Just in case if things go south, we can just go ahead and pivot and try again. And that way we're not losing like so much product. Finally, our big oil bin. I have a feeling I'm going to have to go ahead and open a new one and play with that one a lot along the way. I'm hoping I have enough left to finish out. And if it's one gram off, I am somewhat at peace with it because one gram is okay compared to like five or ten. Oh my god, we had enough. I don't think there's any left to, there's probably like two grams left to salvage. With this one done, I'm going to go ahead and set it off to the side. So coming into this with our oils melting down, I'm actually going to be adding our steric acid to the oils because you need your steric acid in a liquid state. So normally uh, when we were looking at all of this, you want to go ahead and add 0.5% uh, of your oils in steric acid. So I'm just doing that right now and I'm actually going to be adding a little bit less just to err on the safe side in case there is an overstimulation and the lie doesn't go into like a kaboom mode. And that's the best way to describe it right now. So I'm probably using about 0.4% for it, which still won't have an effect. You just don't want to go over uh, the amount just in case you have like a fun little lie experience like what we normally do. So. Once again, tester amount, I don't have much. I'm going to add it in with my melting oils, my avocado butter, and my coconut oil. And I'm going to let it all combine into that phase. So I will see you once that is done and everything's ready to be blended together. Okay, just to show you what we are working with, our hard oils and butters are now nice and melted. Our steric acid is completely gone. We're going to move on to our next step. Okay, set the camera a little low, so we're doing some power squats for this one. So we have our beer and lye water, we have our hard melted butters and our steric acid in there, and then we have the rest of our liquid oils all set to go. So I am going to be combining all of these three together and kicking in the soponification process. And when that one kicks in, I am going to be adding in our tablespoon of our bentonite clay, and then a tablespoon of our beer powder. And that is just to help bring it all together so we want to keep it after the soapification process to keep everything i don't know how fast it's going to set up so i have our tester winston and walter mold ready july if you are seeing me go through this hi but with that i'm only explaining that part because apparently with this process of the steric acid this sets up the soap as a hardener really really fast so i just wanted to get it out of the way and explain my process just in case that I won't be able to in a couple slides from now. So we're going to go ahead, get a close up on this so you can see the wonderful mixing powder and then us throwing in our other powders as well. And then the pouring process. So we're going to go ahead and get that going now. All right. This portion's fairly straightforward. It is our liquids with our liquids, obviously. Well, actually, I should call them our oils with our oils. And then from this portion, we are going to be throwing in our beer lye water. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get my tablespoons ready of our other powder products. Okay, here we go. We are going to kick up this system. Hmm. 
While I have it in this state where it is a nice liquid, I'm adding in our beer powder and then as well as our bentonite clay. I'm going to go ahead and incorporate it all again. All right, it is holding its shape pretty well. It is naturally a very fun, uh, you know, what? I'm going to call it a beer color because that seems to be the safest option right now. And then with that ready to go, we are just going to pour it in and add. So for the soap, I don't think I'm going to do any swirls or anything for this. I'm going to let it sit as is. I believe that this beer soap on its own can be truly beautiful with its simplicity. And I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. And while this sets up, I will see you in 24 hours. Welcome to 24 hours later. And I like how yesterday, I don't know if I mentioned, but it always seemed to film during a heat wave. Well, today it's magically raining going into a chance of thunderstorm. So we're just win-winning every single time. However, our important bit today is unveiling our beer soap. So full disclosure, I will say that I may have snuck a peek uh, right before I headed off for bed, just to make sure that the soap was setting up okay, because this was one that I really, really wanted uh, to do well, and I wanted it to succeed, and this was one that I think I would have been very heartbroken if I did fail. So I did check on it to see if it was going to trace too quickly, if it was going to be very high lie levels, but um, checking it last night, Everything looked really, really beautiful. So now I'm hoping that the unveiling will be just as beautiful. So initially, smelling the soap, I'm I'm not mad at it. It's natural scented, obviously from the beer, and it's kind of like an earthy tone of barley and hops to it. So I'm not mad. And then we're gonna go into cutting it it's a one color soap. It's not going to look anything spectacular, but we can still enjoy the cutting portion of it anyway. All right. So I probably will use this bar as my tester bar just because I said like I was too excited. So the edges aren't the prettiest. So this is going to be our tester bar and everything is set up very, very nicely inside. So there has only ever been one time from us making soap where we have had oils leak out because they haven't fully set up and it was a floral uh fragrance oil actually so that one was like a whoo oh gosh okay Okay, so for the first time ever, we have like a very tiny sliver of soap from our tester bar without us using it the whole time. So I'm actually going to use this as our tester piece. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot now just to see what it's going to feel like. And then we will wrap up this video. And there we have it with our nice little six bars of our beer soap. They set up so beautifully and honestly, the cleansing portion was actually magical. All right, after testing it out, giving it a shot, I will say my hands feel super, super smooth, uh, really moisturized, nice little cleanse to it as well. I know it's like a tester bar and we used it right after we cut it. So I'm excited to see how they're going to perform when they're hard enough and ready to go. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I might be a big fan of beer soap now. So from here on out, I'll let them set up for about an hour to two hours, then I'll stamp them. I like stamping them when they're somewhat soft. It's just a personal thing for me. I find it easier. And then I will go ahead, get their social media photos ready, get them on our website and get the recipe up on our Patreon because I'm not going to lie. I think I'm in love with beer soap now. <laughs> So if you like what you see, like I just said, our recipe will be up on Patreon if you want to see how we do it exactly. And if you want to follow step by step, we are also, and I say this every single time, we are doing our best on our other social media platforms. So if you want to follow us there, 
you are more than welcome to. And please don't forget to like, subscribe. Uh, please follow along with this journey. I feel like I want to keep experimenting with different soap recipes and bringing them forward to see what works and doesn't work. And we're just going to go from there. And I will see everyone next time. Thank you so much. Bye.